Hey guys, so I wanted to preface this video with something because I don't think I got the point across during the actual video um, was that I think the most important is front squatting with a full grip. As you see Ilya here front squat, um, you notice he has a full grip and he maintains control of the bar the entire time. So in order to have a strong back and front rock position, you need to have your whole hand around the bar. With that being said, I gave you some alternatives or regressions if you cannot obtain this front rack position. The front squat is one of my favorite exercises because of the strength requirements throughout the entire body. Yes, it's a lower body exercise, but there's a lot that is required in order for it to be a successful lift. First, we start off with the front rack position. The bar needs to rest on the inside of your front delts along your collar. You should be able to squat in a zombie position with the bar across your shoulders and your arms out forward. Of course, it's not the most optimal way to front squat, but that's just to get the idea of where the bar should sit. When I first teach someone to front squat, I like them to try having a full grip around the bar. This mimics how you catch a clean. It also requires a little bit of flexibility in the shoulders and in the wrists. When we first learn how to front squat, we have to determine how wide to put our hands. The general rule of thumb is not letting them touch your shoulders. Now, the wider your hands are, the more of a solid back position and front rack position you'll achieve. However, this is more difficult to obtain and it might cause some discomfort and some people may not be able to do it. The closer your hands are together, the higher your elbows will be able to get and the more comfortable your front rack position will be. However, this causes some people to round their upper back. If they're still unable to achieve a good front rack position with some weight on the bar and a full grip, then we regress down to their fingertips. Ideally, in a front rack position with just your fingertips, all four fingers are touching the bar. But if they're still unable to do that, we shift down and take out a couple fingers and we go down to three or two fingers. Now this is fine, but if you see that they start to get to one finger, then that's when you wanna kind of shut that down and switch positions of how you go into a front squat. The next position that we teach is with the arms crossed. I don't particularly love this position, but it allows them to perform the front squat and also work their upper back. One of the reasons I don't love this front squat position is that if you tip forward and the bar drops and it hits your forearms, it will cause some pain and some bruising and it'll affect training down the road or even performance in your sport, which is what we don't want. One variation I do like is the utilization of straps. These straps in a way so that your hands aren't actually touching the bar, but it makes it a lot easier for you to keep your elbows up. Does, however, give you the same concern as the previous grip where if you tip forward and the bar slides down, it'll hit your forearms. However, with a higher elbow position, this is less likely to happen. Now, one way I really like to use the straps, and I use this more of a technique and a mobility drill, is you actually fasten your hands to the bar with the straps as you would for a deadlift. Now, this might be a little uncomfortable, especially if they have poor front rack mobility, but it will help them in the long run. When we do exercises like this, we generally do very light weights, but with a lot of tempo where we do eccentrics, pauses, and even slow on the way up. So that's a bit of a breakdown of a front squat. I want you to keep those things in mind next time you go into your workout that includes front squats.